Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Sivir 80 carry here in season 12 for your best runes possible. You're gonna want lethal tempo. I know it's weird. Normally Sivir goes dark harvest. Lethal tempo gives you way more all-in potential and way better overall scaling though. Uh, especially if you're gonna have an all-in style support like a Pike, Alistair, Leona. Lethal tempo is way, way better. So you can actually all-in properly. For the rest of your runes, you want Presence of Mind for the mana, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Mana Flow for the mana, and Gathering Storm for the raw scaling. For your items, you're usually going to start with tier and two pots. It's a very nice start. It lets you perma spam your abilities. You're going to start Q, then get EW, max Q first, W second, and E last. They have an Alistair, pretty annoying for Sivir with his headbutt knockup combo. It's, uh, it's not very clean for us to spell shield it since that counts as two abilities. We only really are able to spell shield the headbutt part, so... We're going to have to position accordingly against Alistair because our E it won't really block both of them, which is exactly what we want. So we can easily block the Jin Snare, though. Jin Bouncing Grenade, that type of thing. You don't want to miss any of your initial starting minions. We're going to go ahead and use our Q. Step up, look for some stray autos. Step up for an auto. Whip out my Q. We've only missed one minion so far, and we have... Quite a bit of pressure now because we have the wave pushing in our favor. Every single time you hit the enemies, you'll be getting presence of mind healing back. And uh, you'll be applying your mana flow when that's up as well. Step not for stray autos. When he steps up, I want to get him with this Q. They need, I think, one more minion for level 2. Alistair is in a rough spot here. Yep, down he goes. Auto attack Q reset is a very nice combo. You can auto then Q and then your auto attack will be up and ready to use pretty much right after. There we auto the minion immediately queued as he went into auto. Gave us a free easy setup. He keeps stepping off to the side. He's taking some rough trades to say the least though. I actually want to reset. I don't want to stay. Because we're already we're missing a huge chunk of health. We've gotten lots of mana flows. We've already stacked up our tier a bit. We're sitting on a massive gold purchase. I would like to back and spend this. We'll grab a uh, double long sword and a control word. At this point, we just don't want to die. Got all of our HP back. Pike definitely overstayed. As long as he doesn't die, it doesn't really matter. You see that the Jin has fleet. If you're playing against any AD carry that did not go for Conqueror or Lethal Temple, you should in theory be able to win an all-in versus them. Conqueror and Lethal Temple are the two best all-in keystones in the game, assuming you're full HP when the fight happens, since you kind of need time to scale them up in a fight. So with that knowledge, we already know we can fight the Jin raw to the death, assuming we're full HP or high HP. We need to thin this out. Don't really want them to crash this on us. Auto attack W reset. They're just trying to dump the wave here. And I can stop that from happening. As AD carry, since you're not going to be buying a crazy amount of control words, you usually lay yours defensively in tri brush. Oh, I was not ready for that. At least we got him with Q. And every single time you hit the enemies, it gives you extra movement speed from your passive. That's how Sivir stays on top of people. Jin's hitting us, so the uh, minions are focusing him. We spell shielded the bouncing grenade there. Minimize the damage. I'm thinking about using a potion. That way we can actually all in this guy. That was unfortunate for the pike. Jin took biscuits and he started a lot of potions, so he's not very easy to poke out. We spell shielded the headbutt there. We have this guy right where we want him. I'm going to heal early, give Pike the speed up so he can stay on top of the Jin. I'll skip that minion. Auto attack W reset. Auto attack Q reset. We're not going to be able to finish him off. Even if we flash, we needed roughly three more auto attacks. And at most, we were going to get two there, even with our lethal tempo attack speed buff. The closer you are to the minions, the easier the last hit. Your auto attacks will get there sooner. I'm going to stay for a plate. We have enough minions, and I've already backed to spend some gold, so. You can bounce your boomerang off of champions, minions, or even turrets, as long as there is a target close by. Do keep in mind that, uh, obviously, if it hits a champion, the turret's going to start hitting you, so. Watch what it's bouncing to. 
You don't want to be taking turret shots when you're bouncing these. Viego can't really do anything. I have my spell shield. I actually wish Pike hadn't done that. If Pike hadn't done that, I would have uh, actually been better off there, I think. But he probably didn't realize that I had it and was ready to use it. So now me and Pike's Flash is both on cooldown. Not very optimal. There's a fat wave the enemies could potentially freeze off of here. They are low though, so it looks like they're actually trying to push it. First item rush on Sivir, usually looking to get a raw mana moon. We can't quite afford it. So instead, we will go ahead and pick up our boots and a refill potion. If you ever have an awkward amount of gold, but you can afford boots or refill, it's one of your best buys you can get on Sivir. Staying mobile and staying healthy. She doesn't really have any healing inside of her kit at all. And you don't take self-healing in your runes. Though you do, you can heal your mana through mana flow and presence of mind. You can't actually heal your HP through this setup. So getting a refill is nice to have. Gonna auto attack, go straight into Q. Almost nicked to Jin there. Kite this back off to the side, minimize some of the damage I'm taking. I don't really feel like freezing it because I know these guys want to back anyways. Okay, never mind. Jin's not backing. Looks like he's actually backed recently. He has the Swifties. I left that minion there so we can hold the wave in a comfortable spot. I'll word the bush. He's playing so aggro. He's so cocky. He has no flash. I'll attack Q. I'll attack W reset. Tried to spell shield his snare, but he just straight up missed it. He's starting to juke to the left when I throw out Q, so I'm gonna have to start putting it left. And it looks like Diego wants to come bot, so. I'll attack a W. Ooh, that was a nice one. That was a big uh, Q we got off there. Got the wave completely shoved in. Spell shielded the uh, Jin snare. We ended up taking a turret shot, which was uncomfortable. I used my R that way. Uh, I could get out of the turret a little bit faster since we were in such a bad spot. Awkwardly played. Spell shields on a cooldown. We have so much mana. It's really, really nice to be able to Q spam. It costs so much mana to use. When he goes in for that first auto. Got Alistair there. That was beautiful. I'm going to bounce this onto Jin, so I have to pull back. I got that last bounce as well. So that was a rough cue on my part, but at least Jin did miss several minions. Kept pulling back. Pike has his uh, support gold item. You gotta pull back on your auto sometimes if your support isn't ready. So you can get some of that juicy gold. When you are pushing down the turret and there's minions there, and Usually want to just bounce your W off of the turret. Go ahead, finish shoving this, and then I'll reset. Sivir is so good at shoving waves. Arguably the best AD carry in the game at it. Assuming she has mana. I'm going to heal early. Spell shielded the Alistar stun. And my Q is... Ooh, I'm dead. Jin has flash. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We definitely overstayed there. Hopefully Pike doesn't die. Nice. He ends up living. That's really big. We have a huge CS lead. We also have a three plate lead. I would, tr would like to maintain that. For your boots purchase on Sivir, if you're Dark Harvest Sivir, you should go Boots of Lucidity for playing more of a scrappy Sivir. You're better off going for Berserker Greaves or Plated Steel Caps. They're junglers AD, they have an AD carry, and then the Garen. So Plated here would be decent. However, we do have a front line of uh, Aatrox, Warwick, Pike. So we shouldn't need the Plated if we position properly. Now we have three plates to their one plate. So we're only up two plates on them. We have a big item advantage. I could go ahead and R right here. We can just take the fight. I'm getting creep block here so hard. I got pushed five times around the minions. It's kind of ridiculous. Very awkward fight. We need a ward right there from the pipe so we can see the Viego coming. 
Jin's not really throwing out many raw abilities at me. He's trying not to give me free mana back. I'll attack W. We landed our Q on the Jin, got a W off on the Alistair. Ooh, that was a beautiful Q. I'm gonna go ahead and use my last refill. I wanna stay as healthy as possible to try to deter them from ganking us. I'll let him get that melee minion. Melees give more gold, and since you both get it off their support item, you might as well let him hit the melees and the cannons. He's gonna lose this turret. Auto attack. Oh, yep, yeah, got his flash, that's huge. We didn't really burn anything for that. We could have potentially flashed and caught up. The thing is he has tier two boots and we don't, so it would have been a little sketch. And now we can look for a reset. Huge, huge, huge. We're up four plates on them. We got first turret gold advantage and 30 more CS. So even though we have a death, we've definitely made up for that. For your mythic item, you're usually looking for a Gale Force on this build. Sivir's all about getting off constant AoE with her Qs. It's easier the closer you are. They can't see it harder for them to dodge it and you can hit more people with it. And with her W, since those are AoE as well, they bounce infinitely as long as there's something to bounce to. So staying inside of fights and being able to reposition is absolutely huge on her. Gale Force will be amazing for dodging Alstar combos or Vlad goes in on me or Garen flashes. I'll just Gale Force away and we'll be fine. If you're going for the Dark Harvest Sivir setup, which I'm not a huge fan of right now, then you'd go for Eclipse or you'd go for uh, Dust, Dust, Dust Blade. I don't really want to steal her minions. I just want her to shove the wave. And down goes Vladimir. I'm gonna flash. I, I assume this guy has Ignite. Nice, that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Vlad was very greedy and tried to force something when uh, he was playing one versus several people there. That was just greedy. I'll attack W reset, down he goes. Pike tanked like a beast. And since Viego technically didn't apply damage, it was only an execute on the pike. That's really, really good for us. Several of them are dead, so I can shove up. Only person alive is Alistair. I'm gonna scrape the whole wave. Could have left it for the Ari, I guess. Uh, just trying to stack up that gold. We're in a really good position to carry with this Lethal Temple build. We'll be doing way more damage than Ari can do. She's basically just gonna be useful for her uh, charm. If you're wondering why we're mid, after you get the outer enemy turret, it's not safe for you to stay there because as you shove up, you have nowhere to retreat to and you'll get three, four man collapsed on. That's why we're mid. We have somewhere to retreat to. So even if the enemy stay for the bot turret, we get their mid turret, then top turret. It's just rotating. So even if the enemies choose not to uh, engage, they're still down a turret and we're just trading off turrets and then we win the game. It's like in chess, if you're up a pawn, a pawn or two, and they just decide to keep trading pawns, you should in theory win that. League's the same exact way. Once you've built an advantage, you can choose to uh, trade off objectives and you should, in theory, win. And you, since you'll be more fed, you'll even be able to take those objectives in theory faster than the enemies can. He lined himself up against the turret. I almost caught him there. We'll hit him with a W. I'm going to use my R, help R to get going here. Spell shielded it. I'm going to heal early. I want that movement speed. Yeah, or I should be able to get it. She even burned her flash. So down he goes. I'm going to whip out that Q. People, a lot of times they make the mistakes of standing near a wall or running near a wall or running near a turret if they're running near any kind of structure or impassable object it makes it 10 times easier for you to land your skill shot because it gives them way less juke options i'll attack w reset in the queue garen burned his r now he has zero kill potential on me i'll let Ari have those pop my other refill and we'll get this deep ward down now we're in the even farther in the driver's seat 
Pike's doing a great job of soaking aggro. Even though his score doesn't look good, he's actually giving pretty good value. All right. Now we rotate top or bot. We'd go top though, since that's where the closest enemy and ally are. Warp flash R, that's kind of funny. I gotta back up this R. I don't know where the enemies are, so this is a little uncomfortable. I spell shielded that. I'm definitely gonna die here though. Very, very unfortunate. Vladimir chunked me like crazy. Even with us spell shielding one of his attacks, it just wasn't enough. He did 1100 damage. We might need to get some magic resist in our build or just we need to avoid these type of fights where a teammate's most likely going to die. I, probably, I can't save them until we have Searle does. Once you have Searle does, you could literally save your teammate because Searle does makes all of your damaging abilities slow the enemy. So our Q, our Ws are going to just AOE slow. It's going to be crazy. I would like to get Executioners first. Can't afford it right now, though. We'll get Executioners and Soroldas because the Viego self-healing, Vladimir self-healing, Jin self-healing. And uh, that's pretty much it. The Garen won't be doing much. All he has is the Conqueror for self-healings. Alistair has a little heal in his kit. Wouldn't count that, though. Got a Gale Force. We can cry things out a little bit better. Think of it just like a Lucian Dash. It's also got a damage execute on it that you don't have to aim, but it's really just a Lucian dash. We'll R for this. Auto attack W reset. Down he goes. Set that wave up for her. I could execute Jin with this if he gets a little bit closer. That nicked him really good. I just need Ari Charm. These guys are both dead. I know there's a Jin trap right here, and that's actually what I'm. That's what I was a little nervous about. I don't actually need this, but I can use it to block this guy's junk. He, I think he got the blue buff, but he had to burn his abilities to get out of that one. Hmm. Yeah, this is an awkward position. Let's just get dragon at this point. I think dragon's the move here. We can even block a dragon auto with our spell shield. I'm not going to because it's a really long cooldown. And like there's really no point right now. <laughs> I'd rather have it for champions. All right, we can look to reset. We can get executioners. We'll be able to AOE apply the Grievous Wounds heal cut with our Q or Ws or autos. That'll be huge. We'll sell our control board and buy into our Sorrel does. Once again, makes all your damaging abilities slow them. Really busted item on Sivir. After Sorrel does, you're usually looking to go get 40% crit, then build IE. So right now we only have 20%, uh, I believe. Yeah, we got 20% crit, so we'd probably just get collector into IE. We'd be doing absurd damage then. Be scaling very, very well off that. Auto attack W reset Q. Oof, I'm gonna R to try to save this guy. Auto attack W reset Q. Jin's having to run away. I also have Gel Force. I could probably catch him. Alistair tried to save Jen. Too little, too late. That was actually a pretty good hook. Now we can just stay in their face, keep shoving waves. They don't have a great champion to get on top of us other than a Vladimir if you like flash ghosts. I'm going to Gale Force away off of this. I also spell shielded, so if he artist there, it wouldn't have done anything. Viego's hiding in the shadows. That's making me a little nervous. I kind of want a red buff, so I hope this is up. Garen does have a delay. Nice. I think red... Oh, oh, that's bad. I think I might be dead here. 
Yeah, sucks. I thought I saw Viego going to the other side of the map, so I thought I would just take his red buff for free since we had map pressure. However, he crossed over when I wasn't looking. That's why you gotta look on the mini map, otherwise you'll int like what I just did. Sucks. Oh yeah, we already have executioners. We're just going for Surolds here. We'll get the uh, armor penetration first, I think. They don't, I actually don't really have any armor yet. Maybe I should just get the call fields for the... Uh... Actually, I can spend more of my gold this way. I have too much leftover gold if I don't buy this with how many item slots I have open. So I'll just get Blast Whisper for now. I don't think the enemies have a late game plan against our comp. Granted, I don't think Pike's good on our team late game. I don't think Pike late game is good in general. But uh, I don't think they'll have a good tool for killing me. I just position properly. I'm gonna go ahead and R early. I'll spell shield this guy. Wow, he's Jin's feeling really good stepping up like that. I might have actually been able to kill him if I all in with Gel Force. We could just play for Drag Soul and win. So many of our allies are dead right now. You can also end up picking up a lifesteal item on Sivir to round off your build. We could get a Bloodthirster then, i.e. Having a little bit of life still can make a big, big difference. Even though none of the recommended items have life still, with a lethal tempo shred build like this, it is nice to have a little bit of life still because we're just not healing off of anything. No matter how much damage we're doing, we're just not getting any health back. Not able to really get in on these guys. I'm getting zoned off here. Ooh, nice. We nicked the gin. That's decent. Work might actually be able to kill him. Work should have definitely stayed on top of him there, I think. Shove this out real quick. I we we could easily hold a wave solo. It's just our Q really. I'm gonna Gale Force away. This is Oh my god, holy crap. That was so much damage. <laughs> Vladimir on his ghost is such a big threat to us. He's only two full item, but he one-shot us, even with our uh, spell shield. Now, he didn't do our full health bar. We're already missing three, 400 health, but still. At least he did blow pretty much everything there. That's something. I'm going to pick up a Vampiric so we can stay at full health. It'll make it much harder for them to set up a one-shot. Because he only did 1,100 damage. If I had just my whole health bar, I would have been able to keep scrapping and kill him. Because so I was underneath my turret. He actually went in for that raw dive. It's kind of absurd. Since he has phase rush, he got away with it. As long as he made contact with three separate hits, he was going to be able to escape. Sword down. Oh, Pike almost got that kill. I'm apparently stepping in Jin Trap after Jin Trap here. Yep, that's unfortunate. We go down. We couldn't kite it out hard enough. If we had our R, Flash, or Gale Force, we would have lived. They were all on a cooldown, though. Oh, man. Or if we had Surl, as we might have been able to live. We're in a really tough spot here because we're not having any proper team fights. Best thing we could have done was just not go to that fight until our, our or Flash or uh, Gale Force was up. Because if they're all on cooldown, you have no real way to kite on Sivir. Your only kite tool is really your 45 bonus movement speed from your passive, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that substantial when you consider... Other champions gap closers and speed ups tend to be much stronger than that on its own. So Sivir's passive is mainly just supplemental mobility rather than just on its own raw mobility. I would like this red buff. Don't know if he's going to give it to me. He might just smite it. Yeah, he wanted it. I'm a little surprised 
we're substantially more fed than him in CS and uh, items, but I guess it is what it is. I know we can do a lot more with it since we're ranged. Wow, one more auto. He used his Gale Force to counter ours there. We have vision of him though. He's dead. He couldn't get good value off his headbutt there. Yep, we can kite them out really easy now with uh, red buff. Got the wave shoved. Your R gives your W bonus attack speed as well. Whenever you W, once you have at least one point in your R, ridiculous extra attack speed. Oh, at least Vladimir died for it. Warwick might be able to solo Warwick. He has HP advantage. Viego goes in. Warwick R is out. Garen is pretty tanky. He also does have heal cut, so I could see... Oh, Viego has heal cut as well. Nice, we finally have Surled as we can carry the game. <laughs> we have so many deads. I do think we have the most damage dealt in the game, even ahead of Vladimir. But we're dying so much. We don't have anyone to pill for us on our comp. Because we don't have Enchanter. We don't have an actual tank on our team. We just have two bruisers plus Pike. And once again, Pike doesn't scale at all. Or his scaling, I should say, is uh, super, super finicky. And uh, overly situational. To where in raw fights, it's not good. For picks, it's fine. Kind of like a Talon. We're just playing for Draxel at this point. We have four, we have three dragons, and obviously fourth one is Soul here. So, Arya out of position. Down she goes. Our R's up. Gale Force is up. We should be able to kite some stuff out. Now that we have Searle, does we'll get the Bloodthirster. Then uh, we might sell an item for IE. We'll see. Ooh, look at that damage. That's nice. That's so cringe that <laughs> that's so cringe that he can do that, but that's Vladimir for you. We had to Gale Force away, use our R and whatnot. Our team's on Baron, that seems kind of forced. Yep, eat on that. They're, they're really using a lot here to try to get me. I have a feeling one of them has flash with just how aggro they're positioning. <laughs> it's very likely. I'm having to max range Q because uh, of that possibility. God, someone stop that Vladimir. Down he goes. These gin traps though. We still need to be careful. Ideally, I get to auto these to get my health back. And then we drag soul here shortly and win the game off of it. Man, I wish my Gale Force was up. Use my R, extra movement speed. Spell shielded. It wasn't enough. Garen got the kill on us. He put himself in a really bad spot, though. It is what it is. We got off a lot of damage and just ended up biting the dust there. Nice thing is we can pretty much finish off our build. We might just be able to end here. Vladimir's the only one alive. If he kills two people, he might be able to stall the game. Yeah, he's... He can definitely stall it here after getting the R. Pike's low. That's one thing about the Sivir build. You do have more carry potential. You will rack up more deaths just by the nature of the deeper you are in fights auto attacking. You'll be taking more damage and people are trying to be focusing you down even if they get themselves killed in the process. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this Sivir 80 carry commentary guide. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.
So looking at the damage dealt to enemy champions, we were right. We did have the most damage dealt to enemy champions in the whole game. Pretty solid. Then for damage taken, we had taken uh, pretty low amount, actually. A little surprised with how much we died. It really wasn't that much damage taken. For runes, lethal tempo was up nearly a full minute. We had maxed out two separate occasions. Bear in mind we were dying a lot in team fights. If we could have stayed alive longer, this would have been a much, 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 much higher number. Also, if the enemy team had a proper tank like a uh, Ramus or Zac or Nuni, someone for me to just really lay autos into, but their team wasn't particularly tanky. I know you're going to say they had an Alistar and a Garen, but uh, Server can actually get through them pretty quick when she has her Surl does. Anyways. Presence of Mind gave us back nearly 6,000 mana. Got a lacquered by 13 minute mark, a little on the later side. Coup Gras did a measly 697 damage. And Mana Flow gave us 732 mana back and increased our mana by 250. And Gathering Storm is giving us 28 AD. Hopefully you guys can see the insane value Presence of Mind gives. Not going Presence of Mind takes away so much from you. Just look at that, nearly 6,000 mana. No other stat on here even comes close to the amount of mana this provided. So even if you do go for Dark Harvest Sivir, if possible, try to take Presence of Mind and Coup de Grasse in your secondary runes because Presence of Mind is just so important to have if you want to be able to keep your mana 